What could I say about the Demon Slayer movie that I haven't said already about the first season? More characters that with not enough development or meaning to make the viewers care until, until the writing conveniently slaps on a rush soft story in order to force you to. It makes the eyes roll that when a character dies, you have to expect the obligatory sad flashback in an annoyingly long death scene. You're not crying because the character is well-written. You're crying because you've been in bait that preys on your own moral subconscious. You think because you cried, this had to be incredible. No. You cry because you can express basic human emotions when desperate bad writing preys on them. The feelings the viewers have towards family love and bonds is a cash cow this series loves to exploit. Still, I wouldn't be complaining if it was at least executed well. This is the movie that broke records and shook the medium. I already knew it was going to disappoint me because being mainstream and bad slash mediocre seems to go hand in hand with almost everything. Painfully so, what I enjoy gets shattered to the corner and ignored by most. Some would say I am being against the popular and for the lesser known on purpose. On the contrary, I have legitimate reasons why I feel this way. My favorite era in the, in the, in the, in the medium is the 70s and 80s period in anime. As a result, and in accordance to my other influences outside of anime, this gave me a ruler by which gives me the ability to analyze anime. I am not saying it is the truth. I am just stating my opinion and trying to make sense of everything as I can. What I want to do is to watch both the old and new to give an opinion behind that context. I think too many who do anime analysis watch only old anime or only new anime, while at the same time being ignorant of what, other, or what the other side had or has to offer. I like to see more content on those who watch both. When it comes to Demon Slayer, it's painfully mediocre to the quality I am personally used to, animation aside. Of course, I'm not saying you can or should like or dislike something. There will always be someone who will enjoy or dislike a series. Among the most painfully difficult to accept in the so-called anime communities is that someone will always be there to not like something you do. That's fine. Be accepting of those people. It's our differences in opinions that make for interesting discussion when it is sincere coming from both sides. Sadly, this is a lost cause for the most part, but it must be said. The movie continues to introduce the viewers to a chameleon named Kyojuro. He talks like a traumatized soldier straight out of the worst boot camp. His character is as lifeless as they come. By the end of the movie, the, the viewers are barely taught anything about him besides cliche lines. Tanjiro is still so painfully morally obsessed, I keep finding myself comparing him to Jesus Christ. He still hasn't grown as a character. Regardless, I enjoy seeing him struggle as he tries to, to uh, simply love someone, regardless of who it is. It's definitely not easy for someone to be like him, and sometimes you could say it's being naive. I have developed a soft spot for this boy. It can feel for the trauma he has gone through. For that reason, I still want him to grow into a great character. Be it if the author can get it together. Just as the first season did, the damage the characters can take to their, to their own bodies and the way they heal feels comical at times. You have characters stabbed with life-threatening attacks that can be healed by controlled breathing of all things. Zenitsu is still obnoxiously not funny and Inosuke is more of a violent brute. The stay of Nezuko is almost tragic. Why is she the only demon who is mentally reduced to that of a child? She's a character only, only revelant during nighttime and becoming more and more reduced into being Tanjiro's personal guard dog. The constant mumbling and lack of character development got long all ago. Got old long ago. A shame because I want her to grow as a character. Shinobu, who is the other character that appeals to me, sadly gets only seconds of screen time. The villain of the movie felt underwhelming. The only appealing part of his character is the amusing and smooth delivery of his voice actor. Other than that, he felt more than useless. The character spent half the movie falling asleep, as I am sure some viewers probably did as well. When you think about it, very little actually happens for the two hours in the plot. The animation, of course, is solid. Hmm. Sometimes it can be funny. As much as the cast is growing on me, the staleness in the story ruins it. The movie brought about nothing new and, and recycled some, the same mediocrity of the first season. Thank you for listening.